Yo, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna go over OBS Studio settings since a lot of people have been asking what recording software I use, which is OBS. It's what a lot of people use, but a lot of people wanna know like what someone that actually makes videos uses for their settings. So we're gonna go over that here today on OBS and I'm gonna show you everything, a lot of tricks that I use. And if you wanna know what quality you should expect from this, just watch any of my videos. I use these same settings all the time and I'm gonna explain why I use them and so on and so forth, how to make your audio better. Basically, just all the tips and tricks that have helped me grow from about zero to 50,000 plus subscribers in just about a year. And I think a lot of it has to do with the quality of the videos, which starts, of course, with how good the game looks whenever I'm playing it. So with that out of the way, let's get into this. If you guys want don't have OBS yet, just go on and go to obsproject.com slash download and you will get access to the downloads page. Just click on this, download it, go through the steps. And and then you will launch into OBS. Now, the first thing I always do when I launch an OBS before before anything, this can help you no matter what, especially if you're experienced little stutters and stuff of that nature, right click and run it as administrator. I pretty much have gotten in a habit of always doing that. I even have it locked as administrator. So that's how I do it. Now, once you're in here, you're going to be set up a screen that looks something like this. Before we go into the settings page, which is just right here, let's first look at your scene. So your scenes are your two things. I'll show you guys right here. So this is the one I use whenever I want to record my screen. So this right here, I use this sometimes whenever I'm making settings videos or the best settings videos and I want to show window settings, I have a screen that just records my display. Alternatively, I also have a game one. This is the only game one I have and it is on a game capture. So what this does is capture any full screen application. This one is a display capture. So if you want to set one up yourself, go ahead and name it whatever you want. Come down to this bottom left, hit plus and find either display capture or game capture. You won't need anything else unless if you have a webcam, then you're going to have to find media source and that's where your webcam should be under. But for me, I don't have a webcam, so it's display or game capture. If we're doing display capture, we just click on that. We go here and then we pick what display we want to record display one or display two or however many displays you have. Just pick the one that you're going to be playing or showing stuff on for your videos. You could also just use that for game capture as well and you won't actually need a game capture one, but I do like to have my own game capture one. From my experience, it seems to be smoother whenever I have it like this, so I don't really touch anything. You could, you know, change whatever you want, but I just keep it at its standard, hit OK, and that's where uh, that scene comes from. All right, so now that we have that, I want to head into the settings. So the settings page will look just like this, and we're going to start with the general tab. This is recording settings, so we're going to be skipping over stream things. If you guys want me to go over stream settings, I have a good settings. I don't stream though, but I do have some good settings for streaming as well that I can do in a different video if you guys want me to. So general, we have only a few things we really want to do. Theme is probably the one you're going to want to touch dark theme. You can go to the brighter themes or this theme right here, which is also a dark one. This is the one I use. It looks very nice. And other than that, you don't really need to touch anything. All this stuff just does not matter. So we can just keep going down to the more important things. The stream, if you're streaming, you can set this up, link your account, do whatever. But if you're recording, you don't need to touch any of that if you don't want to. So before we get to the output, I want to go through the other things because output is the majority of the settings. But I do want to go over audio, video, all this stuff first because it'll set up that much easier and much better. So for our sample rate for our audio, 48k is uh, the recommended sample rate channels you're going to want this as stereo everything else should probably be default correct if not though you will have to make your mic whatever mic you're using in my case i have the go xlr mini so it's chat mic and then desktop audio it's also through my go xlr mini but for you people just using default things you could just hit default on pretty much both of those and it should work perfectly fine but if your mic's not working come down here find your mic click on it now on to video 1920 by 1080 is the industry standard you have to at least be able to run that with your computer if you're not you're really far behind especially with recording with streaming you could probably get away with 900p or 720 but with recording you have to at least be 1920 1080 now the only thing you should probably change here is um this one i don't recommend bilinear i would recommend one of the last two ones this one sometimes introduced stuttering with my system but you could try it both of these look identical and at least in my opinion through my eyes i believe they look the same so i keep it on bicubic this shouldn't make too much of a difference no matter which one you do i've tried bilinear before they all look pretty similar now there are two more hotkeys 
I have a start and stop recording button. I just hit shift in one of my brackets to start recording and stopping recording, but everything else is just your personal preference. If you have a stream deck, you could use that as one of these, and this is where you would set that up. Advanced tab, the thing we're gonna wanna have, processing priority, we'll have this as high. This is gonna allocate your computer resources to OBS. This might reduce your game's frames for a few, a few frames here and there, but the game will not come back choppy looking whenever you're done recording. It's the worst thing if you record a 30 minute video and you go back and it's just a choppy video that's the worst so i keep this at high as for everything else i would just follow exactly what i have nv12 709 and you want the color range to be full everything else you don't need to touch this is just the file formatting and nothing important down here and now we're going to go to the output which is the most important part so there's going to be you're probably going to be sitting on simple for streaming i don't touch it but i usually do go to advanced but if you want to keep it as simple just see how it works you could do that it keeps everything well simple the most important and first thing you're always going going to want to do is find this and you need to find your hardware if you're on in nvidia it'll be called like nvenc with amd it's just the amd hardware you want to find it so it's using encoding from your graphics card and not from your computer processor this will always be better performance your graphics card can uh handle overload a lot better than your processor if you use your processor it's probably going to come back as a very very bad video very very choppy at least in my experience recording format you have this as mp4 this is just the standard here it works with pretty much any editing software. If you are using multiple tracks though, audio tracks, you could use MKV. Some editing softwares are a little funky with it. So probably just MP4. Then recording quality, you could set this as whatever you want, test them. But in our case, we're gonna wanna come up here, hit advanced because this is where we could really customize what we're doing here. So with recording, we're not doing streaming, so just recording. The first thing we're gonna wanna change probably is your recording path. You're gonna wanna find somewhere that you could put all your OBS videos. For me, I just found a file, made an OBS folder, and that's exactly where it sits. Recording format, still sticking with MP4. Audio tracks, I have two. I'll show you guys how to set up both of those in a minute a lot of people only have one and the problem with that is you can't adjust the game volume after you're already done recording without lowering your actual volume of your voice too so i like to set up two one for my voice one for the game audio that makes it so i can adjust the the game audio depending on how loud a specific game is you can always just do it through obs too but sometimes i mess it up a little bit i'd rather have full control over it to make this one higher this one lower whatever and they'll be in different audio forms so that's something that i find really important Encoder, this is where you're going to see either your AMD one or your NVENC. Use whatever one you have. If you have an AMD card, you're going to see exactly what I'm seeing. If you don't, then you're going to see the H.264 NVIDIA encoder, and that's what you're going to use. That's going to go through your graphics card. Now, here's where things get uh, questionable because I see a lot of different things, a lot of different things across many videos. And this, once I switched to CQP, this is when my content went way up because my video quality went way up as well. There's a lot of different options options when you look at rate control method. So you're going to see CBR, VBR, this one no one uses, and then CQP. This is the one that everyone always looks over. So constant bit rate's pretty simple. It's just going to, you, you set it at whatever you want as your bit rate. So 16,000 would be good for a 1080p video. Variable, you could have it go up and down, peak and target. But the problem with both of those is they aren't very variable. With the CQP, you're going to have a larger file size, which is the drawback to it. But the great thing about it is that CQP is a image quality base encoding target so therefore it is going to go up and down kind of like the vbr almost but it's going to use as little as bit rate and as much bit rate as possible to keep the image consistent so the entire video there's not going to be blurry moments there's not going to be any of that it's going to be consistent throughout i find this a lot better than cbr specifically just constant bit rate because if you're looking at a static image you don't really need it to be a constant bit rate and the same thing goes for if you're looking at an incredibly like high motion spinning in circles video game you need that to be have a higher bit rate so so the bit rates definitely need to be fluctuating. So CQP is the best way around that. Now the standard is going to be 22. It's going to set you up at, this is something that you could change based on whatever your computer can handle. I have it set at 18 and it works fine for me. Some people have tested this and say that it doesn't matter. Anything under 22 is a little overkill, but I would rather definitely be overkill than underkill, but 22 try that out first. You can move down if you want to, but just test this with your game. Make sure go somewhere. You know, if you're playing a shooter game to go throw grenades and just watch the explosions, just make it the crazy scenarios you can and just make sure it does not stutter. If it stutters, move it up. Another thing you could do, set it at whatever you want. So CQP go to preset 
hit you know whatever one you want high quality would be 18 and once you get up further you basically get to zero at one point indistinguishable is at 15 so i would just keep it at high quality because that sets me at 18. you want your key interval to be at two and that's really all you need to do if you want to get crazy about it you can go to advanced expert or master mode i've never had to there's no reason to unless if you have some crazy crazy circumstances that you for every reason would need to do that but cqp 1818 works for me but you could just change that cqp up until it does not stutter at all and looks perfect so go ahead and hit apply there go to audio and this is where i have my track one which is game and track two which is voice so the game i set it at 320 and audio bit rate i set it at 320 so to be able to do this is you got to identify what track is which so for most of you it should be game and then voice so game will be your desktop and voice will be your mic and auxiliary and that should be the only ones you need if you need to add more tracks though you could do that but i have not gotten that far you just have to set yours as game set yours as voice and then come here and make sure it's recording both if you only have it checked at one then it's only going to be checking or it's only going to be recording whichever one you have checked so it might be just be your audio or just be your game audio so make sure you have it checked at both if you are planning on using double audio tracks all right, so that's the settings. Now I wanna show you some mic settings as well as some game settings to make your game look better. So I don't know if you guys know this already, but game capture is one. This is another reason why I have these separate because I'm able to add filters onto this. So you could just right click, hit filters, and you could add pretty much anything here. The only one I use is color correction. I already have mine set up, so I don't need this one, but you could you know have your game it'll show right here and you could adjust this to make the game look really good now at one point i had a little overkill the colors were a little too vibrant a lot of people commented on it but now i have it at a good point where it just looks really really crisp and it makes your it makes your video really stand out it's a little bit more bright there's a little bit more color it's a little bit more pretty much everything you could even add sharpening to it you could really you could really tweak your game as much as you want and not just have a typical like screen record you want to make it look better than it would look in game for you you want to make the obs record it in a way that you actually don't see it so this is going to be this thing that you really got to play around with um but yeah i would start with color correction you could add all the other stuff as you go down the line play with it play around with it but this is what i am using at the moment it barely changes it just changes it a little bit to make it look a little bit better than everyone else's now the last thing i'm going to recommend you guys do is come down here to the mic auxiliary go here and then we want to find the filters for this i have a complete go xlr so i don't really need to mess with these but for you people with just normal mics you're going to want to set up a noise gate you might want to even set up gain so you're ending up up here in the yellow slash red range. Some people say don't ever go into the red range. I've never had an issue with it. It makes the mic loud and crisp. So I keep it up in the, the high yellow, low red range. If you get up to the zero, like way up there, then you have an issue. You're gonna have to turn everything down because that's just frankly too loud. So that's what the gain's for. The gate is the one that you're really gonna wanna mess with a lot. Because if you notice, if I stop talking, which I will in a second here, you see that there's no like fan noise, static noise or anything. That's because my Go XLR has a built-in gate, which basically cuts off any sound from your fans or anything when you're not talking. So if you're not talking, there's nothing coming into your microphone. There's no fan noise. There's no anything. So you're going to have to set this up. You could also set this up with your keyboard to make it so you can't hear the keyboard if everything's silent. But you're basically just going to mess with these two. You could probably keep these at 15, 200, 150. But you're going to want to mess with the close threshold and the open threshold. Just move it up and down. Just keep them going up, up, up until everything is perfect. You don't want your voice clipping. If you have it too low, it's going to be clipping. So just see where your normal talking volume is and set it a little bit down over here. So you're probably going to be around this range, the negative 35, negative 40. And this should work really well to kind of minimize any computer fan noise, any AC noise, anything like that. So those are some crazy, crazy useful tips that took me months and months and months to learn. So I hopefully you guys actually enjoyed that because I'm giving away my secrets that I personally use. So if you do enjoy that, leave a like at least. And I appreciate you guys a lot for watching all the way to the end. Hopefully I helped you. Let me know if you guys have any questions down below. I'll be happy to help you on anything OBS related. But with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Peace.